Okay, we're going. All right, let's call this meeting of the Land Use Planning Public Works Committee to order. Um, it is 6 p.m. Uh, via Zoom. Um, it was posted as a Zoom meeting. Um, who do we have here? Hold on a second. I got to get myself. Um, so um, Naomi is here. Uh, John Marshall, as you said, is excused tonight. <clears throat> Okay, um, do we have any citizen comments tonight? No, I'm just here as representative of the Tritown Trail if you have any questions later in the agenda. Okay. <clears throat> All right, perfect. No other, no other uh, public comments? Okay, moving on informational items. I have, uh, no, there was no informational items that I got. Um, Review and appro approval of prior minutes. Um, I have a motion to approve the regular minutes of January 3rd, 2022, the Land Use Planning Public Works Committee. Um, so moved. Councillor Rodriguez. I'll second that. Okay. All right, moving on to old business. We have the discussion wait, 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 regarding. You need to vote on the minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. All in I'll favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Sorry. <laughs> I just skipped right over that one. That's okay. Thank you. <laughs> discussion, old business, discussion regarding Ledger's annual appropriation for road maintenance, road repairs and resurfacing, relative leaks and breaks in the water system that cause ongoing repair. Uh, work requiring excavation and patching work on newly paved streets. Um, I did, I, I read the, the agenda, I didn't, but I know we've talked about that. And as Rex answered, so Steve Maslin um, is, is um, recommending that we take this off of our agendas and that he is working on that um, um, to do that a little differently. Is that correct, uh, Roxanne? Yes, that is correct. Uh, he, he he suggested um, it be addressed through the um, road ordinance and that he's working on that. Okay, so we're going to address that. I'm in favor of, of removing that off. Do we have to vote on that? No, you can do it by consensus. Okay. Uh, you can vote if you want, but you can do it by consensus as long as the committee agrees. Uh, uh, Council Rodriguez agreed. agrees. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, take that, remove that off the agenda um, per the recommendation of Steve Maslin to address that with the road ordinance. Uh, move on to item number two on the agenda. I'm gonna get my eyes fixed here. Uh, motion to um, adopt a proposed resolution. Proposed resolution town of ledger endorsement to participate in the Greenway nomination of the Tri Town Trail Greenway to the Connecticut Greenway Greenway Council, as contained in the draft uh, dated December 21st, 2001. Um, so this is what we looked at last month. Um, and I know that they, they went to you, um, Juliet, correct, to get some because we had some questions, just a couple questions on the on the application that they they filled out, and we had recommended that they talk to you about that to make sure that was filled out correctly. And I think the one point that we were we brought up was the municipal um, uh, where is it um, municipality? What question was that? They checked. They had checked yes to like both of you know. Yeah, I'm trying to find it, and and so we so we asked them to come to you. Um, and just to kind of make sure that 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 was in line and, and filled out properly. Yeah, we we talked about it. I had some recommendations and I, I am looking at your resolution right now. And you're mentioning the town of Ledger's 2003 plan of conservation and development. That is not your current plan of conservation and development. I mean, you shouldn't be referencing well, a plan that's outdated. What is the date? 
um, they just did it in 2020, I believe. So that, that one's two two times old. They did one in 2013, and there's one over here that's more recent than that. Yes. Okay, so we'll just update that to say 2020. Yeah, but make sure it still has that recommendation in there too. I, I'm well, I knew they had done probably does, amendment, but, but I that they uh, uh, changed the whole entire conservation plan of conservation and development. Was was it a full rewrite or just an amendment? Uh, well, you know, it has to be done every 10 years or so, but uh, that one looked to me like not much different than their 2013 plan, but their 2013 plan was different from their 2003. So that's what I'm saying. Whatever it said in 2013, it probably still says today, but the 2003 is very outdated. Okay, so so the correct date you would say would be the 2020. I, I believe so. I'll look while you're talking. I thought that that was the, actually the 2013 one. Uh, it just got updated a couple of years ago, like Juliet saying. <clears throat> yeah, so it looks like it was amended in 2005, 2009, 2010, and I know it was just done in, I thought, 2013 as well. But... Yeah, I'm not sure why they put the 2003 in there. I think that's because that was the last one I had on file in our <laughs> office. I don't know, I think it was 2020. It was right before I got here. So. Okay, I'll just update that language, um, that date to 2020 in the resolution. Right, and I think I think our question last month too was was the question number ten on the Connecticut um, uh, on the um, uh, Greenway application, and that was what that was alluding to. So that's that's what we're talking about right there. It's the local plan of conservation and development cited CT plan. Of, so that needs to be updated to the. Yeah, it's 2020. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, I read everything else over and I didn't think there was anything else on that. Any other discussion on this? I'm going through the POCD really quickly right now. Yeah, just make sure it says yeah, what that is, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was kind of. Are you able to pull it up, Juliet? I no. <laughs> uh, I just googled Ledger POCD and it came up the twenty twenty. Um... The most recent one. Mm hmm. I think it's recent. Yeah, yep. I just I think I got it here. Hold on. Town of Richard. February 2020. Yep, February 27th of 2020. Let's see if I can. All right. Goals uh, encourage recreational access, encourage the development of healthy communities through promoting access to parks, recreational opportunities, including trails, greenways, community gardens, and waterways. So I would latch onto that language. Yep. Okay. Which is pretty close, I think, to what you had, right? Yeah. So that's in section, just so you don't have to go look at it again. On page 15. So you'll amend that, Roxanne? Yeah. The, mm -hmm. Well, just up background information. Yes, yeah, 2020. Okay. So I move to adopt a proposed 
resolution, Town of Ledger endorsement to participate in the Greenway nomination of the Tritown Trail Greenway to the Connecticut Greenway Council as contained in the draft dated December 21st, 2021. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. Discussion? 2020 is the year. Did I say the wrong Are thing? Are you ready? No, that's okay, you got it. Uh, is everybody ready to vote? Yeah, yep. Uh, all, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. And also page 42, there's a goal, encourage, promote access to parks, recreation, and trails. So either place the executive summary or page 42 is the other language that you could stick in there. Yeah. Got it. Thank you, uh, Julia. Uh, moving on to item number three. Dis uh, discussion regarding um, Public Act 21-1, legalization of cannabis, marijuana, retail stores, and microcultivator. Okay, so I read this. Yeah, I started reading it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You like that, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me find my paperwork. I have questions about that. Okay. So, it, I, uh, Kevin Dabrowski, Chairman Dabrowski, are you still there? I'm here. Okay. So, I have a question about this. Um, so, it's going to go to a referendum in November, but you need 10% of the residents to vote for it to go to referendum. So from land use, do you want us to, what is our um, goal here? Is it to approve the language that goes onto the referendum ballot? Yes. Okay, my second question. Do we choose one of the three or do we choose all three? um hold on <laughs> because yeah, that there's was, a, uh, when, I there's, was reading, well, when i was reading the oh, i don't even know where it was hold on a moment yeah because it's a lot of pages <laughs> but bear with me there is one line well it says only vote for one so I'm taking that to mean either yes or no, or is it one of the three? Hold on, I'm reading what the I'm reading what the yeah, it's a little Let's see if I mark it down anywhere. So I the, the way I read it is you just three different wordings you can put on the ballot mm -hmm, one yeah. is the shell the sale of recreational marijuana marijuana be allowed in legend mm -hmm, mm -hmm. shall the sale of cannabis under a specified license or license be allowed mm -hmm. in legend or shall the sale of recreational marijuana be prohibited in legend so okay. that would be the wording so the, you could go with one of the three okay in this that case here sense. number two wouldn't account because we don't have a um an application in front of us for a specific license right and i know the license is a million dollars yeah what, yeah so, it's, so planning and zoning is already juliet correct me if I, I i speak out on this one uh planning and zoning has already done the first hurdle which was to put a moratorium in place right for one year right the, which goes to november 22nd correct Yep. The second part of this is now us to move forward with the referendum vote ballot. And so the language, we would pick which one of the languages you want. Obviously, number two doesn't count because we don't have a specific application. Right. Um, so it either shall be allowed or prohibited. So it all okay, depends on how so you want to put the wording. Although I think that second one, there's more to that one. There is more to that one, yes. 
it's not a, it's not a specific application it's i think the town can it there's some um no oh, i've forgotten yeah, i thought that was i thought that was a plan you know with and how you wanted to be regulated through planning right zone, right? right yeah that's how i understood that okay so i really yeah. think we should leave number two out probably probably we don't have anything else to put in there right right okay so we have one or three and Gary, I need your input also. Um, number one just seems the most straightforward to me. Shall the sale of recreational marijuana be allowed in ledger? Um, number three, shall the sale of recreational marijuana be prohibited in ledger? What do you think, Gary? <laughs> Honestly, that's a lot of question. Boy, I'll tell you, I was doing a lot of reading on this. Um, you know, and for me, I, I kind of would, you know, for me, it's, 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 it's a matter of, of, of asking the question to the town. It, it, and that's, and that's just my opinion. So, you know, you know, the first one sets it in a positive, it's not automatically setting the negative tone. And the second right. way of asking it sets the negative tone. It's, it's, so you're, well, you know, number three is, you know, do you know, you know, well, yeah, you know, I guess it's either way, should it be prohibited? You know, it's, it's, I don't, I don't, you know, you know, should it be, you know, I don't know, either one I could go with, to be honest with you. And, and, you know, I, I could go on for a long time about my, my thought process on that, but. Since you don't have it permitted currently, the more neutral one would be the first one, because right. you don't have something you're asking if you should. Versus well, that's kind of, what, one. that's kind of why I'm, I'm kind of saying that yeah. there's, there's, it's not there, you know, shall it be allowed. Right. The, number one seems neutral. Right. Number three seems uh, like we're, we're like we're saying we don't really want we don't it. want it. Well, well, I, well I we're think, leaving it up to the voters. True. We just right. Kevin, what what I hear you. I, I'd like to hear you. So the, the reality is that, you know, how do you want the voters to when they look at this on the ballot um, to the point of ones in the positive ones in the negative? Yeah. If you put the first one on a yes vote means it would be allowed no vote means it would not correct the third way the third one is a yes vote means it's not allowed right. i think it's more straightforward in number one right as far as the wording is concerned it's, it's, that's so, kind of where i'm coming from so um, it alleviates any confusion and um any right. it's, it's not a if i voted yes when i really wanted it and the third question this is the less ambiguity in my opinion and right. the question number one than there's in question number three Thank you, Counselor. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so are we going to do this? Um, do I need to put the date? Can I say I move that the November 8, 2022 election include the following question on the ballot? Shall the sale of recreational marijuana be allowed in ledger? Question mark. Um, can I just ask one other question? Yes. If, so the Planning and Zoning Commission put this moratorium in place in theory to come up with potential regulations. Although I feel like the planning and zoning commission also wanted to hear what the public really wanted. Right. right? So I guess there would be the scenario that if the planning <laughs> and zoning commission came up with some sort of, or me came up with some sort of draft regulations that that would kick in that number two, potentially. So I don't know if you have to decide tonight what the questions have. Well, to that, be. that, that, see, that was my next, that's my next question. So if there's still time and still work that can be done, say in the planning and zoning side of that, is this something that we should be deciding, you know, like this month or next month? But it's in a moratorium for a year. So, right. Cause we're supposed to be working on creating regulations. Right. I'm just saying so there could be the scenario that we come up with some sample regs, right? And so then the, the question could be on the ballot. Hopefully you would have had a public hearing or something, but so shall the sale of cannabis under section X of the zoning regulations be allowed? But just so you know, in order to get something on the November ballot, the council would need to vote on the question to present no later than August. So you have until right. August to actually put this for the for the for you and then the council to actually vote you have to do it within so many i think it's 90 days or something right. I, I have it written down 
in the office, but but I the date that sticks out in my mind is you the council would need to do it by August, so you've got plenty of time to and that's, um, wait and that's for plan. Kind of what I was wondering is if you know do we can we you know can we continue this discussion on this um, and, yeah. and carry this on the agenda? Right, you have you have time to to do some further research and and make your and do your deliberations. There's nothing that says you have to pass this or move on this tonight. Yeah, I, I would I would like to, especially when you have 180 pages of documentation to read through. <laughs> correct, and I mean you know and and you know I'd like to be able to reread some things and 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 you know let some things soak again and um but yeah i i would i would be in favor of keeping this on the agenda and continuing the discussion on this um, okay then i rescind my motion and i'll ask p and z what they what their intentions are too so i mean if their intentions are never to write any regs and i guess that'll make that question a lot easier <laughs> but i think they want to hear if the public wants it so they are you spend saying time on writing regs are you saying there should be a public hearing beforehand? We might have like a workshop or a discussion just to get a general feel, but um, it's obviously a lot easier to just do a referendum and you know, boom, what's the general sentiment? Mm. In other words, I can I can spend time and write potential regs, but if then you get to, the, I spend all that time, we get to referendum and it's an overwhelming, hell no, we don't want this, then I would just waste time. But right. it's tricky because the moratorium is going to end like what, a couple weeks after that, it's uh, that vote. So if the, if the vote is overwhelming, yes, we want it, then we'll be scrambling to get something in place. So. <laughs> damned if you do and damned if you don't. Right. So it's, I think we'll try to get a general consensus ahead of time and maybe just draft something up. Hopefully some other town will draft some fabulous regulation that we can feed um, as a potential example. Well, Stonington must have something. A lot of towns have, have opted into a moratorium, so I'd have to find find a town that didn't. No, it, it passed in Stonington. So oh, it did pass. That's why I mentioned Stonington. I'll look it up then. Did recently? Uh, yeah. Last month or two. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Oh yeah, I wouldn't I think see it. it would, I would have gotten that in North Stonington. It, but. it was shortly after the state statute came through in July, so it was probably in August or September. All right, I'll look that up, but. We'll get some discussion going to give you some guidance from the planning and zoning side of what they want to do. Awesome. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna keep this on the agenda and continue discussion on that one. Any other discussion on this? No. Okay, I'm gonna move on to item number four on the agenda: discussion and possible action to periodically review the list of town old property and update accordingly for the assignment of administrative control. Um, I know that uh, John had said he was working on stuff. I don't know, uh, Councilor Rodriguez, if you looked at anything. Um, I will say that, um, you know, I am still going through a lot of that. Um, I would like to, um, I know I talked, uh, well, I emailed um, uh, Mike Marley over at the Conservation Commission and, and um, um, you know, I'd like to talk to him. He did mention there was a couple um, properties that weren't on there. Um, I am, I'm going to try to attend their meeting actually tomorrow. Um, and I'd like to sit with, with him, but other than that, I haven't done any other work on that. I don't know if you have any other recommendations. Well, I did my, um, homework and I did the first page, all of it. Okay. Um, Mike Morelli might not have the latest updated version. So you might want to send that to him, Roxanne. Um, sure. Mike, I think that's Mike Cherry does have it. Um, Gary, um, Councillor Paul, did he read the updated one? I'm not sure if he it did. It sent out on, on uh, today. I'm not sure if he did or not. I'm, I'm asking if you read it. Oh, no, yes. Got your copy. Yes, yes. Okay, so if you're, do you have your copy you can pull out? So do you wanna go over the first page? I have questions and I can ask here while everyone's here. Get it. Why is that not coming up when you click on it? Um, it should. Um, I didn't attach it to the agenda. I just forwarded it in an email as Naomi had requested this morning. So and I you can still use the old one. So uh, the old one can come up and I can. Well, I have my one. old one in front of me, so I don't, I don't know okay. why I can't get. Oh, wait a minute. I would, I would be able to open the one on the agenda. 
Really? We can use the old one because there's only one little key. Yeah, the one that's that dated Juliet, the one that you have that the dated to JH 2021. That doesn't open on mine, but I definitely, oh, here it comes. No, but I that's not you. That's not the right one. Oh, okay. It's okay, but we can work with the old I one. I have my old one, too, but that, that's fine. I have okay. it right in front of me, so. It's easy enough. Um, I just lost my spot here. Okay. Okay. Some of these you go through really quickly because they're um, very easy, like number one, 17 Elgin Height, Elgin Avenue. Mm -hmm. That's a ball field and its admin control is Parks and Recreation Commission. Yep. So that one uh, left alone. Second one, 13 Applewood Drive. That's Open Space Conservation Commission is the admin control. My question on that one is um, when I'm looking at these open mm -hmm. spaces, I'm thinking, is this usable open space? Is there any other open space owned by Avalonia, Avalonia Land Conservancy or Nature um, Conservancy? And I didn't see that for Applewood. So I'm going to leave that as is. Number two, August Meadows. Number three, two August Meadows. It's a 0 0.97 acres. It's a basin. Admin control is Mayor Public Works. Um, I did speak to Steve Maslin about this one and they're saying to um, leave it with Public Works and um, uh, they're fine with maintaining it. Well, uh, the big thing in that is it's a it's a detention basin. I'm not sure the conservation commission wants to maintain the convention. Uh, no, the conservation the commission does not want to maintain that. Right. So leave that alone. And I crossed out the conservation commission. Um, the next one is 16 Autumn Way. That is uh, 0.14 acres. It's an R40 zone. It's a road right away maintained by Mayor Public Works. It's a cul-de-sac. And I went and looked at this on the GIS and 16 on a way, this is really funny, 16 on a way, it's on a cul-de-sac and a little stretch of it is um, right away land. It's a little slip of land. But when you look at the, the street over, which is Deer Lane and you look at 11 Deer Lane, it's also a little strip of land and it's right away, but they're both join, joining with each other. So that one um, I left as is also. 19 Avery Hill Extension is 4.60 acres, Glacial Park Kettle Hole. A backyard. <laughs> and that's the Conservation Commission. Yep. Um, I also left that as is, it's a park. It's not part of planning uh, parks and recreation. No, no. Nope. And I looked at the topo map. So um, I left that as is. 40 Avery Hill Extension. This one is 2.6 acres. Open space conservation commission is an in control. It's above it is land owned by Pfizer, which well, is 215 Stoddard's Wharf Road because I was thinking, is there any way we can combine the two, but Pfizer is not Avalonia Land Conservancy no, or anything. No. So leave that one alone. And I left that as is um, Open Space Conservation Commission. Yep. Next one, 151 Avery Hill Road, uh, 2.43 acres. It's not shown on the GIS, but I know what it is because I was on planning and zoning when we talked about this. Um, it should be admin control should be the town um, WPCA. The reason I say that is because that was part of the Holmberg property and they gave it to the town for water. It's behind Tucker's Run. And um, so for that one, I reckon, and you can help 
if you can help me, uh, Councillor Dombrowski, that one I would recommend go to WPCA. Yeah, I agree. That should go to WPCA because that is for water infrastructure with the new tank that went over in Gales Ferry. Okay, so that one is the change I would make there. Mm -hmm. 192 Avery Hill Road is 1.92 acres, Open Space Conservation Commission. That one I will leave as is. 203 Avery Hill Road, 6.5 acres, Open, sta open Space Conservation Commission. I left that as is. The next one is 40 Barton Lane, 1.98 acres, open space CLMP easement. And admin control is conservation commission. My question is 40 Barton Lane is part of the um, Tritown Trail. Do we leave it with conservation commission or do we put it with parks and rec? And it is adjoining to Avalonia Land Conservancy. I would, I would probably recommend it. No, 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 no it's not. Yeah, I would, leave, I would leave it with conservation because it is an open space. Right. Okay. The next one, Nine Birch Street, 5.51 acres, R40 zone, open space from subdivision, conservation commission. It's mm -hmm. basically a vacant lot. And it's not adjoining with um, ALC or Nature Conservancy. So, um, I with that one, I left with Conservation Commission. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I would leave it there. Uh, okay. Yep. Open space. The next one is. Hold on, one moment. Okay. This is where the new one would come in handy, and I can talk you through this. Okay. Naomi, I have the new one up. You have the new one up? Great. Okay, so I'm going to use my new and my old. 40 Bitter Street, Bittersweet Drive yep. is 3.64 acres in a R40 zone, open space with right of way. Admin control is Mayor Public Works. The only problem is there's a house on 40 Bittersweet Drive. But if you look next to it, there's a little strip of land and then it, you have like an empty lot. And that is uh, the 3.64 acres. And then it continues on to the, it goes around the neighborhood and loops. It's like a strip of land and loops all the way around to Avery, to another street. So, and I believe it has a basin. So I spoke to Steve Maslin about this. He believes it should be with Mayor Public Works because it is an open space with right of way and he says it has a basin. Um, I think what we should do that the open space required open space for the subdivision though? I think it was part of that subdivision open space. Yeah. But there was but there were also with on that property built the right away access through. Um and right. that's why that it's so it's part of the open space, part of the subdivision, but there's a right did the deed right away on it as well. So 40 bittersweet is a home. 40. So I think we should get 40 bittersweet off. And then you have 40A and you can combine that 3.64 with that strip of land that's 8.35 and you can combine those together. What do you think? Well, right now they're showing on the land record is two separate parcels. So leave, we have to leave it as they show the land record. If we modify the land records and so put those parcels merge. together, we got to merge them together. So we can't mer we can't change the list until we do the merge on that part. So you have to keep them separate for now. Okay. Can we discuss a merger in the future? Yeah, of course. But the problem is with that is that because it's deeded right away on that on the first parcel and not on the second parcel, 
the second parcel should probably go to conservation commission. Oh, I see what you're well. You know, what I'm saying so. Keep admin control separate. Because if you combine, I mean, we do have we've had properties in the past where multiple entities have had uh, admin control of. Um, I use for example the, the the old fairgrounds and the Ledger Center School were all in the same parcel, so that was kind of joint own joint control with the Board of Ed and uh, Parks and Recs. We've got them separate right now. We, if, if for some reason we decide we want to go and at a future date go merge them together, we could, um, if that's feasible. Um, but right now, I would recommend them leaving them separate. So leave it as forty bittersweet. Yep. With a home on it. But that's not owned by the town. Forty bittersweet is not is um, what's listed here. Timothy there's Phillips. A, there's a there's a home on 40 Bittersweet. Right. So this is this that 40 Bittersweet is listed as being owned by Timothy Phillips and it's 40A Bittersweet that's owned by the town. All right, then 40 needs to be deleted from the list. Yeah. That's probably be yeah. It's probably something we acquired in a yeah. a lien somewhere or something like that and we ended up selling it it just didn't get pulled off the list yeah because the, the, remember the gis is not and no I think it's not the reason, correct the reason okay, why so is the 40 if you delete 40 bittersweet then 40a is the open space is the open space right but with a basin on it that's why conservation doesn't want that because they don't want to be taken care of of you know of the basin right there's okay. a basin on it Oh, there's detention, so then that would go to Mayor of Public Works. Right. Yeah, that's okay. My question now is, so now we have 40A, bittersweet. So that combines the 8.35 and the 3.64? No, the 3.64 goes away because it's somebody else's property, if not owned by the town. Right. Can somebody pull this up so we can... Um, so I'm... Yeah. It says 8.35. No, no, so, not that. I need the GIS map. I am. I'm looking at the GIS map. So when you click on 40A, it says it's 8.35 acres. I don't know if that's yeah, right. Go to 40 Bittersweet. 40 Bittersweet is listed as 2.07 acres. Okay, now look to the left. of Because yeah. I just looked at that. Look to the left of 40 Bittersweet, and there should be an empty lot of 3.64. Mm -mm. No? No. I just looked at that today. Um, There's two houses on either side, 38 and 44, and then that open space right of way access out to Bittersweet starts there. But um, okay. I will take a look at it, but the recommendations eliminate 40 bittersweet and take that off and leave it with Mayor Public Works. The 40A bittersweet. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm seeing the same hold on here. Oh, I, I see what you're looking at. What must have happened is that 40A or whatever. I don't know what the lot lines look like before, but that that section of it before it has a little leg that goes all the way around. Yes, that might have been 3.62 because I can see the numbers 3.62. But if you click on it now, it's going to measure the whole thing, which is 8.35. 8, the 8.35? Yep. Perfect. That's what I wanted. Okay. Yep. We're good. Just eliminate 40 bittersweet. We'll delete that and leave it with Mayor Public Works and it's open space with right of way with basin. And I think I actually had that lot line adjustment plan over in here. I've seen it. So we could double check that. Okay. Um, we have a few more left. Mm -hmm. uh, four Blonders Boulevard. That's our 40 zone, Colonel Ledger Park, Parks and Recreation Commission BOE, leave that as is. Mm -hmm. uh, Five Bluebird Drive, R40 Open Space Conservation Commission, uh, 4.61 acres. I want to know, is that accessory? Is that what? Accessory, uh, I'm sorry, an access way. 
Which, number, which, what one, number is it? Which of that? It's yeah. a five Bluebird Drive, num account number 32250. Mm -hmm. Five Bluebird Drive, 4.61 yeah. acres, yeah. open space. It's got full frontage. That's 50 feet of frontage. Okay. I um, recommend to leave that as is. Yeah, I think that's just part of the. Um, next one I have questions on 13 Brewster Drive, 0 0.08 acres, R40 Zone Open Space Conservation Commission. I don't. Uh, that's a that's one of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what those are. I don't I don't know know they we, there's, there's several of those little itty bitty things that we own. Yeah, I saw a couple of them. And my question is, why do we still have a small piece of land? Because Can subdivision, to... subdivision re regulations require it. For the concert, um, for the, for that's future, right. That's for future right. development, you have to put in some mm -hmm. wacky potential access to a lot that you think might subdivide further or something. Right. Yeah, it is a, <laughs> a, a yeah, weird acres. Yeah. You know, between two homes. And what's it, what's gonna subdivide further? The the lot it leads to is not big enough. I know. This is one of the somehow the way everything got broken up. And this is what got left, and somehow this got deeded to the town. I don't know that, when. That's a weird one. That's a weird one. There's a couple of them. There's another one, and there's at least another one I know of. It's like only 0. 0.1 acres, it's the same thing. Um, I know you I know you can you, you provide open space every time you do a subdivision that i get right. but that's such a minute piece of land yeah i'm there's thinking there's no this... way we can ask one of the neighbors if they want to buy it <laughs> you just you have can. to make sure it's not a culvert or so is it the drainage system for that subdivision somehow i don't right. know i was going to take a drive out and look at it but at right. the time that would probably be the best thing because if not i would recommend exactly what you said before if it's just but maybe yeah, there is a you know a drain or something there. Right. Okay, so this one we'll we'll come back to. I don't see anything that jumps out at me on the aerial either. So this is this one here. Okay. It's... Moving on. Um 16 Captain Amos Stanton Drive, 5.30 acres, R60 zone. Open space and cemetery conservation commission cemetery commission. I left that as is. Um, Thirty two Cedar Ridge, sixteen point one five acres, R forty zone. Um, open space from subdivision sixty four acre pine swamp conservation commission. Can't really build on it, and I left that as is the vacant lot. Uh, 67 Cedar Swamp, uh, 3.69 acres. That is labeled as an R60, but when I looked on G GIS, it's labeled as an R80. There is no such thing as R80 anymore. So I corrected every one of those. Okay, so R60 it is. Open Space Conservation Commission, and I left that as is. And, so, and then on the new copy, 77 Cedar Swamp, 7.20 acres, Open Space Conservation Commission. Mm -hmm. I left that as is. And there's one new one that I skipped by because it wasn't on the old copy. Uh, so if you go up, there should be something in red, 224 Avery Hill Road. Nope, keep going up. Is it not? Play or the other? You're going to go, hey, it's, it's Avery Hill, so it could be at the top of the list. 224 Avery, Avery Hill Road, there it is. Um, oh, yeah. That's another try time. It's like 29.99 acres, so 30 acres. Um, user code should be 903B, municipal new R60 zone. I didn't know what this was. And it says Ross property and then um, hyphen N, portion TTT, which I take it to mean Tritown Trail. Mm -hmm. It's the easement over it that the they easement. bought. Right. Easement, okay. So admin control parks and recreation commission. 
Mm -hmm. So that one I will leave as is. And that's my report for the first page of the list of real properties owned or leased by the town of Ledger. I think I can do this for um, one to two pages a month. Right. And so I should be done by July or August. Does that time frame work did, for you? Did, did Councilor no rush. Paul and did, Chairman Dombrowski? Did, did no rush on this. Okay. Um, the, awesome work. The one thing I'm one thing I'm gonna say on that one that you just pointed out, the 224 AB Hill Road. Yeah. To the point yes. that is not owned by the town. The town just bought the right of way. Right away. The town owns the right of way for the Tri Town Trail. That's all. That's all that is. So it's not so, the entire property. So should that be more of a conservation commission? No. No. No, but it should be better described how much of it is or, or explain right, right, that it's just right, the easement. Right. We don't know. We do not own 224 or at least oh, okay. 224. We only, we, we as the town, the Tri Town Trail can't um, uh, get the easement that had to go through the town. So the town is the one that purchased the, the right of way easement. So that's on that parcel, it is only the Tri Town Trail easement that the town has any vested interest in. Okay, got it. Yeah. And um, Naomi, I probably have to add two more parcels to this. I have to check to see if the uh, transfers went through because there was a, there's 34 Village Lane just had an open space sub or conservation subdivision with open space, and 48 Town Farm Road. Yeah, was I, right I, when I got here, so I think right. that yeah. went to the town too. I figured that stuff would be added. So yeah, I'm I'm expecting revisions. But thank you. There's the two that yeah, I can think of. Right now. Thank you for um, making those updates for me. Mm -hmm. And that's all I have for that part. Awesome. Uh, appreciate it. That's a lot of work. So we'll continue, we'll continue working on the on the list and we'll keep this going on the agenda. Uh, Councilor Rodriguez, thank you very much for doing all that. You're welcome. <laughs> A lot of work. Any other uh, discussion on this? So we're going to continue to item number six, uh, discussion regarding potential future use for the one 101.8 uh, acre Clark Farm property located at 1025 Colonel Ledyard Highway. Um, I really don't think there's any discussion on this. Does anybody have any discussion on this? Nothing's changed as far as I know, correct? Mm -hmm. Or come up? No. Nope. The only reason why I had kept this on the agenda and I inherited it when I took over land use uh, is because this is this property is under town control admin. Correct. And it's in right now that's being it's being farmed. Correct. Correct. Right now it's being part of it being farmed, um, at least to Mr. Major. Um, and part of it is also being used for the Tritown Trail. OK, so we'll just keep it on the agenda in the same you know, uh, in the same light, right? But just to kind of keep it on our radar then. Yep. In case it, uh, we ever need to. And Councillor Paul, you skipped over the blight report, but um, Mike Terry's not here. Thank you. <laughs> I did. Uh, maybe, do we have any discussion on item five, continued discussion regarding the progress of enforcing regulations um, to address blight? Um, like you said, Mike Cherry isn't here. I mean, if there's any other discussion on that, um, I don't think there's any anything else he's been doing his inspections though because i'm on him on this because that's what he's supposed to be focused on so okay. he's he's made some progress with some people colonel ledger highway i know has started to clean up a little bit i think uh, when we went through this last month he, he kind of went through some of the, the the troublesome ones and the and everything else but um yeah i wanted to, to completely update this or update what Kyle had started, you know, before he steps down as interim. So whoever takes over doesn't have to pick this up. I want, you know, get all these to the attorney that need to go and be done with it. But. Gotcha. Um, any other questions or any other discussion on this? So we'll, we'll move on to that. Um, we, we went through item six and we we're going to keep that um, on the agenda moving forward. For discussion, we're going to move on to item number seven, um, a status um, update regarding security and safety concerns regarding um, park on East Street. So um, if you don't mind, Councillor Paul, I um, have an update on this one. Okay, go ahead. 
Okay, so I spoke to um, the resident, Jameson, who wrote one of the letters. Mm -hmm. And I spoke to Chief Rich. It was very um, informative. Um, there have been issues on and off. Both agree that some progress has been made. Um, there have been separate meetings with residents who have written letters with Chief Rich and Mayor Allen. Um, but there still needs to be some follow-up from both of them with the residents. Um, activity has been slow in the winter because it's cold. Um, one comment made is that um, they're very happy that Parks and Rec is now locking the gate. Both the residents and um, Chief Rich would like this to remain on the agenda okay. and uh, for throughout the spring and the summer to see how things progress during that time. And I have notified the residents that I will be making a drive by in the spring and summertime to look at the area. And that's my report. Awesome, and I'll agree with that. I also reached out to to the chief and I actually, I actually gonna be meeting with him um, this week um, as well. So we're gonna, I agree that we just keep this on the agenda um, and keep discussion moving on, on this one. Is there any other discussion on this? It's hearing none. Um, any other old business uh, proper to come before the committee? Hearing none, I'm gonna move on to new business. <clears throat> For new business, item number one is a motion to amend ordinance number 300-008, an ordinance establishing planning and zoning fees for subdivision, new construction, alteration, change of use, and zoning permit applications in the town of Ledger, as contained in the draft dated February 1st, 2022. Do I have a motion? I move to amend ordinance 300-008, an ordinance establishing planning and zoning fees for subdivision, new construction, alteration, change of use, and zoning permit applications in the town of Leisure as contained in the draft dated February 1, 2022. I'll second that in discussion. I read through uh, this, I'm, I'm just, so this is um, uh, Juliet. So this is just updated language and what I'm reading when I yes. go through, is, is that correct? Yeah, so you don't have a town planner, you have a planning director now, right. that kind of thing. And I just fixed, you know, exactly what we do charge for. Okay. Um, Cause you had sort of a partial list. So I wasn't sure if it needed to all be spelled out but it's probably better if it is. Um, I'm trying to think what other major Right. So that's, that's what I'm reading when I, when I read the, when I read the draft, right. That's, these are the changes that are, that are going in. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was, it was that one section where I just listed out what, what we charge fees for basically. I did look this over. It looks fine. There were some um, corrections, but um, that was taken care of and everything looks good. Any other discussion? Hearing none, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye, motion carries. Um, item number two, motion to amend, excuse me here, let me just get myself organized, I'm sorry. Um, a motion to amend ordinance number 300-008 appendix establishing planning and zoning fees for subdivision, new construction, alteration, change of use, zoning permit applications, and the town of Ledger as contained in the draft dated February 1st, 2012. 22. Um, I mean, 2022. It's been a long week. <laughs> okay, I was... Maybe I type. I'm going back to beers. <laughs> Do I hear a motion? <laughs> I move to amend ordinance number 300-008 appendix, establishing planning and zoning fees for subdivision, 
new construction, alteration, change of use, and zoning permit applications in the town of Ledger as contained in the draft dated February 1st, 2022. What is what is this one? Is it different than the other one? That's that's why was my question was, you know, when you when I open it up, it's the same exact uh, no. everything everything is the same. It's a duplicate of agenda item number one. That's it, why I was like no, click on it a second time. Hold on, hold on, Roxanne. Actually, this is the appendix, which is a separate document to the ordinance. So we have to update the appendix as well. But it's not showing. It's click on it a second time and it'll show up. That happened to me. What? Do, do, say that again. Click on it a second time. Second Go time. back to number two. Click on agenda action item. Yeah. And it should bring up the 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 appendix one. No. Oh, hold it. Open. I, I got it to work. I didn't. <laughs> nope. It still says. Nope. It work. It's working for me. So uh, if you go off of the maybe the no, that still brings up the same one. Yeah. I can see it on you guys. I can't. I'm we can't. We can. so. <laughs> That's what I'm uh, clicking. <laughs> on the actual on, off of the off of the the minutes or hitting the. I'm hitting the link. Get off of it. Go back in and click on agenda action item PDF. Yep, and I get the same thing. I get. Yeah, the, the, I don't get. I do not get anything different than we did for, for item number one on the agenda. For, uh, oh, okay. See, okay, hold on. Go to underneath it and click on that. I'm going, neither one of them are coming up with anything other than what was on agenda item number one. It's yeah. working for me. <laughs> it's not working for anybody else. I know, I don't. Okay. The only, the only okay. difference is that it says appendixes. That's it. But hold on, let me update. No, hold on, let me see if I can find it here and bring it on the screen. It is different. I don't disagree, um, Roxanne. It's supposed to be different. Yeah, it is different. Um, Hold on, let me reload the web. Yeah, but those are the same documents on one and two. No, right. they're different. Yeah, I'm not getting it to do it for me, so I'm still seeing the same. Even the third one is the same. I have three, those three, those three I agenda have items have the exact same thing. Yep. Just try this here. Roxanne's going to bring it up. Yeah, give me just a second. I'm trying because yep. Juliet sent me a couple of emails with them and they were, there was one, I think they were labeled backwards or something, but I tried to save them correctly, so. Because um. that third one would have to reference both documents. Correct. Okay. I'm sorry, it's just taken me a few minutes here because there's so much stuff. Yeah, well, Land <coughs> Landy's third, one looks a lot different. The third one works for me also. Oh, fair. <laughs> I'm special. Yeah, I, don't I, know get, how. I, I get the same thing in all three. <laughs> me too. Yeah. <laughs> I think Roxanne planned it that way. <laughs> Yeah, no, I really didn't. <laughs> and I converted them to PDF because so that the uh, changes wouldn't, sometimes when you upload uh, track changes, it, um, it, it, it just accepts them and then you can't see them. So I converted them to, um, to a PDF. Yeah, both, and, uh, both are working for me, the PDF and the link. Um, you have a Mac? Okay. I do. There you go. We all have PCs, I guess. I'm doing it on my phone. 
Oh. <laughs> you don't count. <laughs> I'm really sorry it's taking so long. I it's normally I have them all together and for some reason they're not coming up. Oh. So this was uh First one. Trying to find the date. Is it different on the? They're all three different. Well, I'm just trying to see where I. Maybe I. Did I go? And this is the PDF on this one. I'm just opening a different link. I want to see if I can make it work. Okay, I got it here now. Great. And I already read it and made the motion. I'm going to share my screen now. Okay, can you see it now? Oh, there we go. Yep. Yep. Okay, so this, this is the appendix. It yep. says it over here to the right. You can't see it because your faces are over there. And then the thing she highlighted is, well, Juliet can explain. All right, this, I just want to make sure. So the track changes aren't showing on this. Oh, so, wait a minute, let me see if I can. When you go, yeah, there okay. you go. There you go, yep. Um, some of it's obviously, I'm just changing uppercase, lowercase, that kind of thing. Um, I'm just making this a little clearer than it was for staff. Staff is having a hard time sort of figuring out what to charge for what. So these are new accessory structures or expansions to existing ones, less than 200 square feet, between 200 and 1,000, and then over 1,000. I totally disagree with that, but I'm going to leave it as it is for now. Okay. But uh, it should just be one price for accessory. But um, And then planning and zoning requires site plan approval by planning by for anything over 1,000 square feet, whether it's residential or commercial, which is also unusual. But So I wanted to clarify that it was site plan and not just a zoning fee or a zoning plan. And then for a change of user, that's just somebody's an office now and a new office is coming in. There's no, all I'm doing is updating the name and address on the file. I don't feel it's right to uh, charge a fee for that. Okay, yeah. Nobody else does, you just, it would be crazy. And then the, the, so the ones on top are, are they, those are applications for something that, that's, you're going to get in an application on a form and you're going to review it. And that's when the state gets money. The ones on the bottom for like a, um, a, a zoning compliance letter. And right now you don't charge anything for a boundary line adjustment or lot merger. And a lot of times there is no application there either necessarily. It's done by a deed. So those, it's not appropriate to, to charge the state fee. Signs also is pretty unusual to, to charge the state fee. I mean, this is sometimes they're swapping out a sign face. It's, uh, so it's not like a land use application. Those are, and some towns don't even do it for um, change of use. So, right. but since you have the possibility of a commission review for a change of use, if it's something that required a special permit or something, to me, that is an application. Application, um, and then we don't do zoning. We don't review demolition permits. That's totally in building. Okay. So I would recommend that signs, boundary line adjustments, and zoning compliance letters don't take the fee. Don't add on the fee. Um, and then I just kept the price sort of uniform there. Uh, 
and then the planning and zoning commission application fees specifically for you know if they're reviewing it and i added on some things that you know i just put it in the proper language made it a little more concise now this one okay go up to that one that's this is one you have to discuss and i i could discuss it with planning and zoning so site plans special permits app special permit application, zoning text and map amendment. Um, and then they had other applications requiring public hearings, including site plans as recommended by PZC. In statute, you do not have to have a public hearing for a site plan because it would do absolutely no good. A site plan is administrative. It's administrative. If, if it applies, if it complies with the regs, you have to and say yes. Okay, the entire public can come out and say it's a horrible idea. Planning and Zoning Commission still has to say yes. So to charge somebody $500 for a public hearing that's not required, I'll leave it up to you, but <laughs> I would not do that. I, I would not do that. I wouldn't, I would be very strongly discouraging the, the Planning and Zoning Commission from holding the public hearing to begin with, but I, I really don't feel like you should charge the person. What the Planning and Zoning Commission can do is for a regular site plan, the, the, the um, chairman can decide that people can talk, you know, and it's not a formal public hearing, but you can get input. There's nothing right. that says a human being can't speak at a meeting. So that's, so that this is me suggesting this. So you can reject that if you want. Um, and then all the others, are, there's no other change. I can say I would certainly agree with you on the on the five five hundred deal just just on what I've gone through and past businesses. Um, <laughs> that's a little absorbent when the regs say you can't. Um, I would absolutely agree with that. Um, some of the other ones, I actually kind of, I mean, I, I guess that's you know, you know, there was there's a couple, you know, I don't know if you can scroll up a little bit, but I think that's. You know that's fine, but yeah, I would kind of, I would agree with you on that one. I, um, on anything else, I don't, I don't really have many questions on. I mean, it, it's pretty, you know, just reading through it. I mean, it's in, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So they were charging five hundred dollars, and you don't even need a, you don't even need a public hearing. No. I mean, if it's in the regs, so why, why, why would you charge the five hundred? I just think it's. It's, I mean, because if you require a public hearing, you have to notice it like any other public hearing. Right, and but if you're not, money, so, so that can't be, so that can that be changed? Can that 500 be changed? Well, I would say if you want to charge, if you want to have a special, a public hearing, don't charge the applicant that. If the Planning and Zoning Commission wants to take it out of their budget to do it, fine. But I just don't think that's right to the, you know, then you get into the oh God, just slippery slope, dangerous water. Of why did you make me have a public hearing and not that guy? And this is a bad idea. It's just a bad practice because you, you can't do anything with the information anyway. Right. So now so, you're just so picking on people, <laughs> basically. So basically, yeah, it's suggesting, suggesting to just have the $500 for the special permit application for zoning text and that amendment right application yeah that would all that would be what the 500 dollars would be charged for only yeah and you know actually what where is resubdivision in there oh yeah they so they have it down there 500 additional fee for a subdivision resubdivision requiring a public hearing public and hearing. again really no subdivision requires a public hearing period so but they don't typically do that so you're probably safer there but um you might want to actually consider there is no scenario where a subdivision would require a public hearing under statute it's only a resubdivision that requires a public hearing so, so do you want to take the word subdivision out i i would because that's that's an incorrect way that it's being stated because it's saying a subdivision requiring a public hearing by the statute that that is not right be. only only you said only a re re subdivision yeah you got to take out the word subdivision right not 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 that okay. right not a re subdivision that right roxanne roxanne wrong word, wrong word. Yeah. oh it's yeah it's got a subdivision 
Which one? Subdivision. Subdivision, not re-subdivision? Correct. This one? Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, do I have it right now? Yes. Yes. Okay, got it. We have any other discussion on this? I'm trying to think of any other questions I have. Now all that that's already that's already there, correct? Yep. Okay. I didn't I didn't have a chance to talk to um Steve Maslin about you know, those are some hefty fees, but um but nobody seems to complain when we charge them. So I guess it's okay. It's because I'm not opening on a store in Ledger. Yeah. Um, I th uh, that's more for subdivisions. Right. Right. Engineer. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. But it, it, I mean, roads are complicated so that could be perfectly appropriate i i would have right. no idea i don't have any history there all right i've seen a third party review costing that much so i guess it's probably fine okay and then oh and then i added on the most important one of all all fees are non-refundable period <laughs> gonna end that discussion right here oh yeah all right because they, so all I, fees are non refundable regardless of applicant status or final action. And we can, like I said, we can always waive the next fee if we're feeling, feeling generous for some reason. But what happens here, and I've and I've, I've witnessed it firsthand, is applicants and you have you have some notorious surveyors in your town who are friends. I mean, I've worked with them for years, but they hand in shoddy work. You know, they hand in half baked applications and then run out of time to do all of the fixes withdraw them and then they'd been giving back all the money i'm like you already noticed these things i mean you can't do that so it, it, it will the first time we don't give back their money they'll be a lot more motivated to make sure they hand in a complete application that's correct i would agree with that actually and it's less work for staff and less complications for accounting and it's as the director of land use i'm hoping you'll allow me to have that policy because it's just the right way to do it. I don't have any other questions. Anybody else got any questions or any more discussion on this? I mean, um... okay, so I guess I need to amend my motion to include the changes that were just made. So from the amendment. So it would be the draft dated, updated draft dated February the 7th. Um, yes. Uh, and I need a second. Um, I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So that motion will carry. I'm trying to watch what's on TV behind him. Uh, oh. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little little football. I got to catch up on any news. Um, okay, so that motion carries. So motion three, I'm, I'm sorry, um, item number three, uh, motion to set a virtual video conference, public hearing on Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022 at 6 30 p.m. to receive comments and recommendation regarding proposed amendments to ordinance number 300-008 an ordinance establishing planning and zoning fees for subdivision new construction alteration change of use and zoning permit applications in the town of ledger as contained in the draft dated february 1st 2022 
Okay. And just, just for clarification, the public hearing is only for the ordinance. It's not for the appendix because the appendix does not have to go to a public hearing. Correct, right. just, just the ordinance. Right. There'll okay. probably be a vote on the same night, but they're treated two separate documents. I move to set a virtual video conference public hearing on Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. to receive comments and recommendation regarding proposed amendments to ordinance number 300-008 and ordinance establishing planning and zoning fees for subdivision, new construction, alteration, change of use, and zoning permit applications in the town of Ledger as contained in the draft dated February 1st, 2022. Discussion? Second, somebody second. Uh, I'll second that uh, discussion. In accordance with the town charter, we have to have a public hearing if we're going to adopt a new ordinance or ordinance amendment. This is where you get beaten up by the public mm -hmm. <laughs> about not refunding their fees. But um, I'll come to defend myself. Okay, so all in favor? Councilor Rodriguez votes aye. Okay, um, aye. Okay, I have a question. Do you want the ordinance to go to admin for review and do you want the appendix to go to the finance committee for review before the public hearing? Good question. No. Councilor Rodriguez, what do you? I would say yes. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with that. Okay, got it. To go. And um, okay. Um, Number four. All right, moving on to number four. Um, any other old business proper to come before the committee? Hearing none, um, I will look for an adjournment. Motion so to adjourn. Moved. Second, all in favor? Aye. Um, meeting adjourned at 7.18 p.m. Um, thank you everybody for Good night, all. coming Good night. tonight. Good evening. Appreciate it, thank you.